Welcome, friend of child. And congratulations on the first day of your illustrious career with the Fatui. You sound remarkably sure of yourself. Remember, we are mere mortals. Our ideas are fluid like water. Only the Tsaritsa truly has a will as solid as the permafrost. But back to the matter at hand. Child tells me that he has upheld his end of your agreement. What agreement? Oh, the thing about him helping us find a guy? Correct. Child promised he would find someone to break the stalemate. And the Harbingers do not break their promises lightly. Ah, where is that guy anyway? Child is currently at Leoli Pavilion. Oh, oh, Paimon knows this one! Ahem. There are two styles of cooking in Liyue, known as Li style and Yue style. They have been competing for centuries, but neither has emerged as the clear winner. The flagship restaurant of the Li style is the Liu Li Pavilion. The owner especially chose to open the restaurant at Feiyuan Slope so they could compete face to face with the Xinyue Kiosk, which is the flagship restaurant of the Yue style. to Paimon like that. Anyway, Paimon's hungry. Let's get moving. Aha, you made it. As promised, I have found someone who can help you. Someone who can solve the mystery of why the Liyue Chising would hide the Geo Archon's vessel. So, where is he? In Liyue Pavilion? He certainly is. Come, I'll introduce you. I took the liberty of setting up a business dinner, as per the Liyue custom. Welcome back, sir. You honor us with your patronage. Mr. Zhongli is awaiting your arrival in the room you booked. <sighs> Hi. Allow me to introduce Mr. Zhong Li, consultant to an organization known as Wang Sheng, and a trusted associate of the Fatui. Indeed, Wang Sheng's line of work can be sensitive at times. Let's just say they understand when discretion is needed. And we, the Fatui, have always been glad to do business with friends who walk in the shadows. Walk in the shadows? It is an honor to meet you. I have heard tell of you from Mondstadt. Discretion? Shadows? <sighs> is Wang Shen some kind of business involving... dealing with people? Indeed. 
It is as you have guessed. <laughs> the Wongsheng Funeral Parlor organizes burials. We ensure that those who pass on do so in peace. Huh? <laughs> Did you think he was some sort of hired killer? The Fatui calls many such people friends, but the Wongsheng Funeral Parlor does not dabble in such business. Well, ostensibly. Well, they are still... Uh, I shouldn't say too much. In any case, I brought you to meet Mr. Zheng Li because... Because I can bring you to see Rex Lapis's vessel. What? <laughs> Don't be so surprised. Sure, the Geo Archon's body has been squirreled away by order of the Tian Chuan Ning Guang. But first, let's hear what Mr. Zheng Li has to say, shall we? Rex Lapis may be the prime of Adepti, but he is ultimately an Adeptus. Many Adepti have left us over the millennia. This is the inexorable trend. The times have changed. You must have felt it too when you were at Jueun Karst. Archons go by many names. The God of Contracts, the God of Commerce, the Warrior God, Morax, Rex Lapis. Is the idea that he also has the title of Adeptus so strange? As you have seen, the time of the Adepti is ending, and the time of mankind is slowly dawning. In years past, Liu's tradition was that a huge memorial service be held to mark the passing of every Adeptus. But this time, the Qixing have made no attempt whatsoever to respect this tradition. It is sacrilege. Yeah, the killer hasn't even been caught yet. Deicide or not, the concern of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor is this. When the ritual to receive this god is so kingly, it is all the more egregious for his final send-off to go unattended to. Traveler, Child has told me a lot about you. Since you have had dealings with the Animo Archon, could I ask you to help me prepare the Geo Archon's last rites? Well, if you really think about it, we don't have any other choice. Indeed, no amount of consideration can change this outcome. The Tianchuan Ning Guang has forbidden anyone from accessing Rex Lapis's vessel, which of course you would need to access if you were to achieve your goal of meeting all of the seven. Precisely. Only by participating in the rite of parting will you be able to see the form of Rex Lapis again. If we are agreed, come with me. We will speak of the details as we walk. All right, my bridge building work here is done. Turned out well, didn't it? You can go if you want to. Don't worry about me. I might just have a few more drinks and get acquainted with these things they call chopsticks in the meantime. After having experienced the land of the absentee Archon, Traveler, how does it feel to know that our Archon and Adepti are here all around you in Liyue? <laughs> I see. So you're that sort of person. It's not a bad thing. But I suppose you have yet to experience the substance of Liyue's 3,700 years of divinity. Organizing the rite of parting should prove to be an enlightening part of your travels. Liyue is the most prosperous of the Seven Nations, defended by deities and ruled by the Qixing. As such, the diplomatic maneuverings of the Fatui have gained no purchase here. Ningguang of the Qixing has always been on her guard against the Fatui. That is in all likelihood why Child wants to make use of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor's connections. Huh. What would Child get out of us doing the rite of parting anyway? I neither know nor do I wish to know. As far as I am concerned, the Fatui are merely financial sponsors. I only wish for Liyue's traditions to endure. 
These are the advance funds that Child has provided. If you use them up, you can go to him to apply for any subsequent funding. Wow! Well then, let us be off. The first step in our preparations shall be to obtain some prize Noctilucus Jade worthy of a deity. Welcome to the Jade Mystery, my good friends. Would you like to try your luck betting on Jade? This could be your lucky day. It's cheap and it's fun, and who knows, you just might strike it rich. Betting? No, no, we're here for... Um... What was it again? Nocta Lucas Jade, of Radiant Grade at the very least. Radiant Grade, Nocta Lucas Jade? I see. You're not a tourist. My apologies. I have some here for your perusal. What do you think? The Jade Mystery is an old name in the Jade business. Just look at that wonderful quality. Rex Lapis doesn't often bless us with such finery. Go on, pick whichever one you like. These three pieces really do look pretty. Not like the ones you usually dig up. But how do we pick? Should we just grab one and go? Oh? You want me to decide? That is fine as well. If it were me, the answer would be simple. Oh? And that would be... I'll take them all, boss. Oh, you act with such panache, good sir. I always knew you were not a man of ordinary caliber. Oh, wait, wait, boss! That one didn't count! We need to discuss it again! Hey! If we only need one for the ritual, aren't we wasting three times the more if we buy them all? Oh, Mora. Hmm. It is as you say. I suppose I overlooked this particular aspect of the transaction. Huh? How do you not think about Mora when buying things? If one must always consider Mora before acting, then in all things one is bound by Mora. Uh, what? All Mora is currency, but not all currency is Mora. Is this how the rich live? Well, he knows a lot about big money, but not a lot about big savings. No need to waver. Even when I am constrained by Mora, I have ways of working around my limitations. Evaluating the quality of Noctilucus Jade is indeed very tricky. As crude ore, there is little difference in texture, lustrousness, and internal pattern between good and bad jade. Only after the item made using Noctilucus Jade has taken shape will you be able to see whether it is up to par or not. If you return to those crafty merchants to quibble, they will counter by saying that your crafting bench is to blame or that your heat control was poor. Whoa! To think it's that easy to get cheated! But there is a way to truly evaluate this jade. And a true insider would know it. A fool sees the pointer and misses the moon. What does that mean? If you point at the moon with your finger, a wise man knows that you are pointing at the moon, while a fool will only see the finger. The patterns, the facade, these are all the finger. Noctilucus Jade is a mystical stone used to light up the darkness, and so its brightness is the important thing. It is the moon. Noctilucus Jade of excellent quality would have superior pyro affinity. In other words, the bluer and brighter the luster of the ore under high temperature, the higher its quality. I have imparted the priceless secrets of the Jade trade to you. Now, all that's left is to put it into practice. Priceless, huh? Paimon's just said that we might never be able to use it again. We're back to buy some rocks, boss. 
But can you let us burn them first? Uh, burn them? You can't do that, my friends. If you were to do so, what would I have to sell? Not buying? Oh, come, come now, my good friends. We can still discuss this. Negotiation is key to trade, wouldn't you say? How about this? I can take a small sample of all three. I'll take a bit of a loss. Uh, we'll count it as a friendly gesture. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. As long as we can prove that it is good jade, you will not take a loss. All right, take these as samples. I've carved them off with a knife and tagged them to boot. Aren't these too thin? Even paper's thicker. No, even a bug's wings are thicker. These are almost see-through. <laughs> oh, you flattered me, but I have to be gentle with these rocks. They are my pride and joy. If I'd taken off even a bit more, it, <laughs> it would have killed me. But wouldn't something this thin go poof if we held it to the fire? It can't be helped. Trying to deprive a merchant of his profits would be like forcing a ravenous wolf to vomit up the food in its stomach. Nonetheless, under the right conditions, these thin slices will serve. What sort of conditions? While we add the high temperatures using pyro, we can use hydro to reinforce it from within. This way, the samples will not disintegrate immediately. Oh! Oh, sir, to think you were this learned. Thank you for your understanding. Strictly speaking, asking for samples when we have not yet agreed to purchase the goods is unfair. Trade in Liyue must be based upon fairness. Well, guess we just need to find a place to try this out. You mean at Wanmin Restaurant? Uh, as long as we do it when she's not in. That would not do. It is a place where people come and go. They would be endangered if the elemental reaction were to get out of control. We cannot take such a risk. Oh, Paimon remembers? We once saw this big pot down at the Data Upa Gorge in the camp of the Hilly Churls from the Meaty Tribe. It's real sturdy and should be able to take the elemental reactions. Now, let's pack those samples up and make a move. It has been a long time since I last set foot in the Nation of Wind. A friend of mine from Mondstadt would always bring a few bottles of locally brewed dandelion wine whenever he came to visit me in Liyue. It must be said that the famed liquor of the land of pastorals is far better than Sumeru's frigid snake wine. That's the pot! <sighs> it looks like the hilly trolls are still using it. It's a bit impolite, but we gotta cut the line! Cool it. Nice and spicy. Dodge this. Let's fire it up and begin our experiment! We're ready to go! Paimon will help remember which one of the three is which. Use Pyro to keep making the pot hotter until we get the results we need. 
Mr. Zhongli said that the shinier and bluer the orchids, the better it is. So, pay close attention. Boba, get them! my friends. I've kept the goods for you. Which of them would you like? Exactly! That's the one Paimon remembers, too! No problem. If you have your eye on this one, you can have it. Then we'll take a box of the third type of jade. Done! All the same, uh, pardon me for asking, but I'm curious. Whatever do you need this much top-quality Noctilucus Jade for? Hmm... I suppose it would not hurt to tell you. We need them to make implements for the Rite of Parting. Parting? Oh, dear. I I'd heard the rumors, but had given much thought to them. This... This means that Rex Lapis really is... Oh, it's hard to believe. Even though the Jade Mystery has been in decline, we have always been under his protection. It is said that when our Lord lost his way while going incognito in the city 200 years ago, it was a spoon from the Jade Mystery that he had used to sample the local delights. Alas, alas, all things must pass. <sighs> well, if this is to be used to say farewell to Rex Lapis, then I shall sell this to you at half the price. Are you sure? You didn't want to even give us an inch before. If not for our Lord's protection, this city wouldn't exist as it does now. No proprietor could earn money off such a thing. Oh, I'm sure Rex Lapis will feel your sentiment, boss. In the safe hands of the Liu Achithing and good honest merchants such as yourself, 
I, for one, believe that Liyue will continue to prosper, as it always has done. All right. Thank you, my friends. What's with me getting all sentimental like this? I'll practically be giving away all my fortune at this rate. Now that we've made our choice, let's take this Noctilucus Jade back. Hey, wait a minute. He said it was half price, not that we could leave without paying. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I must have forgotten to do that, too. Let me see. As I thought, I didn't bring any. Any what? Mora. My apologies. Another oversight on my part. Oh, that won't do. This isn't some small sum. Oh, wait! Didn't Child give us some advanced funds earlier? <sighs> That's a relief. Have a look by... It's fine. Just enough for half price. <laughs> Though, to be honest, it'd be alright even if the sum wasn't quite enough. Well, it's settled then. Let's take this jade to Yujing Terrace. That's where we plan to hold the right. Look at you bossing everyone around. You didn't cough up a single mora. Hmm, it seems that we must. I will keep that in mind. Thanks, both of you. We can leave the jade here. I have already called for a jewelsmith to shape them into the implements that we will need. Ah, yes. I have yet to go and see child. So, as for the jewelsmith's remuneration... Guess we can't do anything else. Also, is this where we're doing the rite of parting? Yes. I have already rented this location, and have begun making preparations for the rite. The Liu Achising have agreed to this arrangement. Here, should suspects like us really be at the crime scene? We might get caught by the Millilith. Although, with that said, since we got back from Dwayne Karst, none of those pesky Millilith soldiers have come chasing after us. Wonder what that's about. Also, the uh, Rex Lapis vessel. Traditionally, we call it the Exuvia. Ah, right. That that's what it was called. You seem to know everything, Mr. Zhongli. Um, so, was this Exuvia hidden away by the Qixing? I mean, we haven't even figured out who the murderer is. One must think that they already have someone in mind. Or perhaps they already know. Surely they must have found all the evidence that there is to find here. These things are for the authorities in Yujing Terrace to consider. Trying to help would probably only add to their troubles. Before the rite is conducted, the Exuvia will be kept temporarily in the Golden House. Golden House? The only mint in Liyue, which is to say the only mint into that. All the mora that flows throughout the world is minted there. Bad. Paimon thinks it suits Morax. But why do you know this, Mr. Zhongli? Since the rite of parting has the approval of the Qixing, it is a semi-official event. As such, there is already some limited information available. Perhaps each has their motives. But this is the capital of commerce. A little exploitation once in a while is not unacceptable. In Liyue, where the god of contracts reigns, only contracts may not be betrayed. I for one have no issue with little maneuvers outside their remit. Well then, we should go and prepare the perfumes used in the rite. Perfumes? Where will we get those? Do we buy them? No. Perfumes used to honor the gods must be freshly decocted. The quality of the silk flowers we require is also special. 
Silk flower petals contain a fibrous material of good quality, often used in brocade making. Its scent, however, is most elegant, and is especially suited for solemn events, like giving offerings to gods and adepti. It's time for Zhang Li's lectures on high society again. <laughs> we shall not speak of the details right now. Follow me. We shall go to the merchants to purchase our ingredients. Hey, boss. Do you sell silk flowers here? Silk flowers? We certainly do. Which kind would you like? Which kind? The, uh... The good kind? The best kind? Remind Paima what kinds there are again. Ugh, you ignorant shoppers. Always coming in here with your stupid questions. Golden Housemaiden, Valley Weaver, and Fate's Yearning. One of each to start with, if you don't mind. My goodness, this gentleman is quite the connoisseur. You two must be his servants. Uh, please refrain from any further attempts to contribute. I'm sorry. Ah, yes. We've met before, haven't we? Sorry, traveler. I shouldn't have spoken to you in that tone. Now then, please peruse at your leisure. Do let me know if you have any further thoughts. Silk flowers exhibit different properties based on how their environmental conditions differ from their ancestral habitat. Nevertheless, these are fine specimens, excellently preserved. Just look at the abundant foliage here, and these stamens, glamorous as a maiden of the Golden House. This strain is an evergreen, and mostly grows under complex hydrological conditions. By contrast, this variety thrives in any dark, damp location, often in large clusters. Morphologically, it is distinguished by the profusion of petals and densely packed stamens, though its powerful scent gives it away just as easily. Lastly, this strain is quite the recluse. Unlike its exuberant cousins, flowers and foliage are minimal, and when in season, it has a subtle yet enduring scent. It was first discovered by the ancients when they scaled the mountains in search of the Adepti. Silk flowers have all but disappeared from the wild today due to geographical changes over Liu's history. Most are not grown by horticulturalists. Wow! A true connoisseur! Most of that was news even to me! I possess but a smattering of trivial knowledge. My traveler friend is the one to watch. They are on track to set foot in every corner of the world. Oh, Mr. Zhang Li, you're way too humble. So, which silk flower did you want anyway? I'll take them all, boss. Again? How can I put this? When purchasing opera tickets, it is natural to decide based on which singer has the most melodious voice. The same logic applies when purchasing a pet bird. But this silk flower purchase is not an analogous case. The same logic does not apply. Perhaps you don't know. Tradition states that we should decoct perfume from different subspecies of silk flower when making an offering to a statue of the Seven. Rex Lapis will then make his own choice between the scents. Like several other tedious and complicated traditions, this one has become simplified over time. But this is the only rite of parting to take place for one of the seven in 3,700 years. As such, I do think we should honor tradition down to the last detail in this case. Now that's settled, a question. <clears throat> do you have any mora on you? You forgot to bring money again? Uh, if I may interject, did I hear you say that these flowers are to be an offering to the Lord of Geo himself? Yes, in a sense. Gosh, well, why didn't you say so? I heard the awful news about what happened at this year's Rite of Dissension. 
It would be bad luck to say it out loud, but I've been worried about our dear Lord ever since. I'm worried that everything I've heard is true. Since these flowers will be used to glorify our Lord, they're free of charge. Just don't forget to pass on my regards. Are you serious? Why wouldn't I be? I would be nobody if not for Rex Lapis. If he hadn't written those poems in praise of my wares, they'd only be worth a fraction of what I can sell them for today. Huh. So much folklore here revolves around Liyue's deity making cameo appearances in support of local businesses. Thank you, boss. I think I speak for all of us when I say that your generosity has saved our skins. Our skins? You were the one who forgot to bring money! Please, it's the least I could do. So, now that we've got the flowers, how do we make the perfume? Ideally, with the help of an expert. Unfortunately, None of my acquaintances have personal experience in the art of decoction. Talk about first world problems. Hence, I need you to help by asking around in the city. Try the common folk, especially women. So this time we get to go around town looking for nice smelling ladies to talk to? Paimon likes this job. I will wait for you near the Statue of the Seven. Meet me there when the perfume is ready. Maybe we can find some good candidates at the Adventurer's Guild. <gasps> Let's ask Blan! She's master of the Liyue Bridge, right? Blan, we need to ask you for a favor. I stopped accepting commissions a long time ago. Sorry, you two, but you'll just have to ask another adventurer. Oh, it's not that kind of favor. It's just a teeny tiny thing. <laughs> Wow. Just... wow. Do I look like the kind of girl who wears perfume to you? I think you're underestimating the kind of person I am. Well, Paimon thinks you smell amazing. So come on, Lon. What's your secret if not perfume? Now that you mention it... Yes, there is something. What is that scent? Oh, it must be from the Qingxin flowers I picked on the way back. I forgot I still had them with me. Aha! The truth is out. Lan's got a soft spot for wildflowers. Uh, no. They were for medicinal use only. Anyway, this is a pointless conversation. If you want to know about perfume, try talking to Chi Ming. The fortune teller, right? Paimon remembers she smells pretty good. Thanks, Lan. See you around. Hello. How may I help? We've come to ask you a question. Perfume? I rarely think to use it, let alone about how to make it myself. That said, some of the cosmetics I use are scented. Perhaps that's the cause of this confusion. Since I usually set up my stall by the docks, I avoid perfume like the plague, because Celestia forbid those lusty sailors catch a whiff and come hunting for the source. That's the worst thing Paimon's heard all day! While we're on the subject, have you never heard anyone mention Ying Ar's homemade perfume? Ying Air? Oh, as in scent of spring Ying Air? Yes, that's her. Many a rich family's daughter has gotten her to make perfume for them. Apparently, her homemade product is better than anything you'll find on the market. Great! This is just the intel we need! Finally, we're getting somewhere! Well, hello. You found me at last. I've been waiting for you. What? How did you know we were coming? Oh, I heard a rumor about a couple who were snooping around town looking for a sweet-smelling lady. Actually, I was starting to worry you wouldn't find me. This is the ultimate test of my appeal, after all. Snooping around? Why are you making it out like we're bad people? What can I say? People love to talk. Maybe you ought to be more discreet in the future if you don't want word to get around. Relax. I know why you're here. You want to get your hand on my homemade perfume, don't you? What kind would you like? 
three in one go. My goodness. You have extreme tastes for someone your age. Maybe the rumors I heard were true after all. You're on the prowl and need some sweet-smelling ammunition? Is that it? <clears throat> Is that the best you could come up with? Even if you were genuinely offering perfume to a deity, that doesn't explain why you'd need three kinds. Sorry, your story just doesn't hold water. Zhang Li was right. People don't remember this tradition anymore. As one of my favorite poems goes, O oh, cherry tree, begrudge not thy blossoms as they are deflowered in the spring, for come winter, even thy sturdiest wood shall wither. That went over Paimon's head a little. <laughs> in short, I'm happy to help. Traveler, you can be my assistant. But you'd better make sure I'm the only person on your mind while you're hanging around with me. So, where is a good place for making sweet, sweet perfume? Where is that, Mondstadt? We're only making some perfume. There's no need to go to such ridiculous lengths. Somewhere closer to home will do. Let's go for the kitchen at Wan Min Restaurant. I've had a word with Chef Mao. We can start work now. Are you ready to please me? What did you say? I meant make me proud, as my assistant, obviously. While I'm setting up, you can go and fetch some water. Stomachs. Even tasty Try something new at the Wan Min restaurant. This water will do nicely. Now, I need you to extract the silk flower essence using a crafting bench. Perfume making uses an altogether different technique from alchemy. Here, let me teach you. Very carefully, take hold of the mortar and pestle. Gently does it. You need to keep your wrist firm so your hand doesn't slip. Now use your strong hand to stir it with a persistent rhythm. Keep going until the juices start to come out. Ooh, you're a natural, like a fish to water. Now take these and try it out on your own using a nearby crafting bench. Don't forget to do all three. They look visually identical during the essence extraction process, but I will put them into separate containers when the perfume is ready. something new at the Wan Min restaurant. Wow, this is some exquisite silk flower essence. On to the next stage, the most important one of all. The essence is placed into water and simmered over a low heat until most of the water has boiled off. You must take care to control the heat during this process. If the temperature goes too high, it will affect the scent. So please focus on controlling the heat. This is the final step. Don't waste a drop of that essence now. We want all of it in there. All three perfumes are ready. And you, my friend, were a wonderful assistant. A testament to the lengths you will go to for romance. It's so rare to see nowadays. Anyway... Shall I give you a brief overview of each scent? It might just help you match the right scent to the right occasion. Paima wants to hear this. This first one is sweet as candy, straight out of a fairy tale. Younger women will love it. The second one is for those with more refined tastes, the first choice for daughters of high society. Finally, the third one has a soft but lingering scent, 
Like a mist that captures the last light of dusk, mature women adore this one. All clear? Don't get them mixed up now. You'll ruin the mood. Good. Be sure to come visit if you ever need help with anything, okay? I'll leave you with some parting words. One who tries to sail three boats simultaneously should be careful not to go overboard. <laughs> come and hang out with me at Scent of Spring sometime, okay? Let's take these three perfumes new, like over to the restaurant. Statue of the Seven! Mr. Zhongli's probably been waiting a while. We've brought the perfumes, Mr. Zhongli! Did we take too long? You were just staring up at the statue. Uh, oh, you're back. Don't worry, I haven't waited long. Compared to the watch that Rex Lapis's statues have kept over Liyue, this was but a brief moment. <laughs> well, how can a person compete with a statue? That is true. Well, have you brought the perfumes? Three sets, and not one less. <sighs> Thank you both. Let us offer them up. This is the first kind of perfume. Miss Yinger said that it's sweet as a dream, and it's liked by younger ladies. This is the second kind. It's got an elegant smell, and the daughters of high society love it. The third kind has a gentle but lingering fragrance. Something, something like the dusk mist. And it's a favorite of mature ladies. Oh, what was that? That's the one older ladies like, right? Does that mean that Rex Lapis is actually an older lady? <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Rex Lapis has taken on countless forms. Perhaps that really was one of them. What a shame. We only got to see the giant dragon form, and... <sighs> Let's hope the chi Sing can catch the real killer. We can leave that to the authorities. Let us focus on the fond farewell for Rex Lapis. So, we finished another step in our preparations. What's next? Next, I would like the two of you to help me borrow the cleansing bell. Cleansing bell? At present, a friend of mine named Madame Ping is the guardian of the cleansing bell. She lives near Yujing Terrace. If you ask her, she will know what to do. Sure, but aren't you going to come with us? Ah, I have certain reasons why I cannot be there in person. Please, do this for me. Man, why has he got to be so secretive this time? <laughs> I apologize, but I won't be able to come with you this time. Once you've acquired the cleansing bell, meet me at Yujing Terrace. <sighs> All things must change. Hmm, youngster, are you here to admire the flowers? Ah, but it's a shame. These glazed lilies have almost all wilted. What happened to them? Back in my day, people said that glazed lilies can read human hearts. If they heard beautiful sounds like laughter and singing, they would also bloom joyfully. But if they heard too much wild gossip or slander, they would quickly wither her way. So that means these flowers feel what's happening in Lilith? Yes. The rumors of Rex Lapis's death are no small matter. They are everywhere. Some say it was a Fatui plot. Others say that the Chi Sing made it all up. And still others think that 
That which lies in the deep is breaking free. This harbor is like a mountain of dry tinder. One spark, and the fire will consume us all. Well, I shall say no more. This old woman's grown too old and naggy. Did you have something to say, youngster? Ah, that old trinket. <laughs> I remember it being here with me, but I've grown old. <laughs> I can't quite recall where it is exactly. An old friend of mine used to wear it on his person. Back when I was young, he saw me gazing at it often and gave it to me. But he told me then that if someone should come to borrow that bell, I should not be loath to part with it. It has been many years, and who knows how many times someone has come to borrow this bell. Still, though, I can't recall when it started. It's been a long time since anyone has come to borrow it. Oh, these old bones are so slow to look for things. I doubt you can wait that long. That's right, Granny. We'll follow you back home and search for it ourselves. And, um, we can help with chores if you have any, too. All right, children. There is no need to worry. I didn't place the bell very far away. Uh, do you live near here, Granny? Oh, but this is Eugene Terrace. It's gotta be expensive. Oh, an old lady like me can't afford to buy a place in this city. See this ceramic teapot? My entire household is in here. How does that work? Youngsters, I simply mean that the bell is somewhere inside this teapot, and you are quite welcome to borrow it, if you can find it. Youngsters, this is where this old woman keeps all her things. Quickly now, go fetch that bell. Oh, that sounds like Granny's voice. So, this is her teapot? What's going on? Oh dear, so many cobwebs. <laughs> it seems I really haven't cleaned it in a long while. Sorry to trouble you, children. Please help an old lady clean up.
such a special teapot? And the cleansing bell? Do you think this old granny could also be an adeptus? One of these too. Or at least we wouldn't have to camp outside. Oh, you found it. <laughs> Youngsters are so quick on their feet. Oh, now, let me. All right, that'll do. <laughs> Come on out now, children. Oh, in and out in no time. You youngsters really are quick. An adeptus. Oh, I haven't heard anyone say those words in earnest for a long time. As to whether I am one or not, child, surely you already understand. Ah, <sighs> Hyman kind of knows what you mean, but is also kind of confused. Are you really giving us the bell just like that, Granny? Don't you think it's weird? Something's just happened to Rex Lapis, and then we come running up asking for it? Oh, don't be silly. Leo Harbor has been through a great deal in its history. In that time, it has seen the departure of countless Adepti. But no matter what, we have always performed the rite of parting first before any other matters. To cry, Catch the murderer at the top of one's lungs, but ignore the right of parting. That, to me, is what is wrong-headed. Now that you have come to borrow the bell, I guess that perhaps an old friend of mine has finally decided to take matters into their own hands. So, why would I be unwilling to lend you the bell? Oh? Well, if it came to that, <laughs> they would find a certain old lady knocking at their door. We haven't met in a while anyway. It would be nice to share a drink and chat. Well, you must have things to do. Since you have the bell, you should return. Oh, and do tell the person who sent you that 
If they have time, they can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. We will. Thanks, Granny. The Meaty Tribe? <laughs> These hilly churls pick the funniest names. The hilly churls of the Meaty Tribe make regular sacrifices. The altars they build are really huge. What do they pray for? For meat to eat every day. It's an awesome wish, isn't it? I suppose I should have expected that answer.